Hey everybody, Z Garcia here, and today we're taking a look at the latest set from Unmatched. This is Dr. Sadler versus a T-Rex. Unmatched here is a very fun game, a very fun system of which I've uh, done reviews for many of the sets, maybe even all the sets. So I'm not going to be going into too much detail when I do the overview. I'll briefly talk about how the game works, but I'm mostly going to be focusing on these characters that are included. Two characters, you can play two player out of the box here. Uh, they've done many different sets with many different themes, some based on intellectual properties like Jurassic Park here, they've done Buffy the Vampire Slayer, various things like that. So, uh, this one is of course, a, it's a showstopper because it has the giant T-Rex and this is quite the figure, taking up two spaces on the board now, having its own, its own interesting rules, an insane amount of, of health that it comes with. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll come on back, I'll tell you what I think of it. So here we've got everything that comes in the set. You've got a board, it's a single-sided board, just this side here. We've got Dr. Eileen Sadler with the uh, Ian Malcolm uh, sidekick there. There are two dials, 13 life for her. For seven, seven life for him, and then of course the T-Rex over here who does take up two spaces and he's got 27 life. Their decks, and then this character over here will have five of these tokens that they're going to use for a variety of things. I should point out they do give you six, but the, the per card specifies five, so I think they just give you a spare, okay? So don't, don't use them all. Uh, and then um, the game is going to play out the same way as all the other sets, which is explained basically right here. On your turn, you are going to take two actions. You begin with five cards in your hand. You can maneuver or scheme or attack. You can do the same one twice on your turn. When you maneuver, you draw a card and you move. If you want to move, you have to draw the card, then you may move them both. They can move up to their move value, which is very important in this set. And you have to draw when you maneuver, which is also very important in this set. Uh, you can boost that move by discarding a card and then using that value there to enhance your movement for both of your characters. Or you can attack if you are next to the other player because both of these characters are melee. You have to be directly next to them in a spot connected to them. Uh, and, or you can scheme. Play a scheme card that has that lightning symbol and uh, do whatever it says. Discard the card. Very simple. At the end of your turn, you have to make sure that you don't have more than seven. You, that's your hand size. At the end of a turn, discard down to seven. And then the other player will go. You keep doing that until you knock out somebody's main character. Sidekick, won't matter, main character. So, the, uh, that's Dr. Sadler, and I'll show you what some of these cards do, what some of the tokens do here. Taking a look at the T-Rex, we've got a few things. Obviously, again, 27 melee. It is, has a move of one, which is very important because the T-Rex is going to be huge, but slow. And then it says here that the T-Rex is a large figure and she can attack up to two spaces away. Meaning, if the T-Rex is here, she could attack this person there, skipping a space in between them and attacking in there. She could attack in there. That is hugely important. One, two. Because you do not need to get right up against somebody else Meaning, if I can attack from there, this person still needs to spend one of their actions to maneuver and move next to me to be able to hit. And then the T-Rex could just back off one and still attack, okay? Just something to be aware of with the T-Rex there. Uh, and so, again, large figure, two spaces away, and then at the end of the turn, the T-Rex draws a card. That is huge! And it has a few interesting implications, okay? The first one being, well, you're getting cards for free. You're, you're gonna have a good-sized hand of cards, usually. But you are going to need to use those cards, oftentimes, to boost your move. Uh, a, a technique that isn't always utilized but by many of the characters. Many of them don't often need to, to boost, to move. The T-Rex does. The other thing that is design space that this expansion is exploring. When your deck of cards runs out in this game, every time you would have to draw a card and cannot, you take two hits of damage. That has always been a rule in Unmatched. In this one, it really, really matters. Because the T-Rex, your the main defense against the T-Rex is attack it while you can and move away, because it'll wreck you. It can outlive you, right? It can outlast you. 
but then also play the long game so that their deck runs out and they take damage from having to draw and not being able to. That is the main way you're going to take the T-Rex down. If this game, if your session of this is short and you're playing against the T-Rex, it was short because you died. I, I think. I'm, I'm pretty certain that that's how that goes. You either play the long game or you die to this monstrosity. So let's talk about a couple of cards in these decks, okay? We're going to start with the, uh, the T-Rex here. We've got this one, move the T-Rex up to one space, draw a card, gain an action. This is an attack of five that draws a card afterwards. Uh, you've got many of the cards that are going to hurt the other fighters and hurt the T-Rex also. So, for example, this one lets you take a card back from the discard pile, except itself, another copy of itself. So there is that one. Uh, we've got here this one. This is 15,000 pounds of muscle. During combat, ignore the value of your opponent's card. This is hits for three. Very good. And then after combat, you take two damage. So really, you're doing three and taking two. The reason it works for the T-Rex is because of the insane life value. We've got some that are going to be uh, this one. This uh, when dinosaurs ruled the earth. During combat, you may boost this attack. And then after combat, if you won, draw a card, gain an action, and take two damage. So the T-Rex is going to be hurting itself quite a bit. There's one that does three damage to both. Let me find that one. Here we go. So Reckless Lunge, this one, is an attack of three. And it says after combat, deal three damage to the opposing fighter, take three damage. It's a wash, but you can take the hits, or ideally you can take the hits, and they cannot. So there you go, that is the T-Rex. And then we've got over here an explanation card for these tokens, for Dr. Sadler's insight. Um, it talks about what's going on there, and then we've got here the different cards. So the main thing is that when these characters move, Whenever either of your characters moves to a new space, place an inside token in their new space. Tokens can be placed in spaces with other tokens, including other inside tokens. They don't do anything in and of themselves, but many cards are going to use them. So when this character moves, then it gets a token like that, where, where they arrived. You know, same thing. This one moves, it gets a token where it arrived. That sort of thing. And so, uh, you are going to be playing cards that are going to let you utilize these tokens plus many other things. Uh, you've got a few healing cards that are going to be important, like this one here, Life Finds a Way After Combat. Your opponent discards the top card of their deck, Dr. Malcolm and Dr. Sadler. Recover health equal to that card's boost value. Very good, that'll keep her alive. We've got here this one. Uh, during combat, increase the value of this card by the number of insight tokens on the board. Remove them after that. So this is only a two, but it could be up to a seven, if you have all five of those out on the board. We've got here, uh, draw a card. This is a versatile card, as was that first one. Draw a card, this is immediately, by the way. Draw a card, Dr. Sally recovers health equal to the number of inside tokens on the board. Remove them all from the board. This is just Dr. Sattler, not her sidekick, but it does happen immediately. Uh, we've got um, deal two damage to, uh, to each opposing fighter on or adjacent to a space with an insight token. So you can hurt characters if they end up on or near your tokens. Uh, we've got a few classics like regroup and, and uh, faints and things like that, which are in a lot of, of decks. This one here, must go faster, must go faster. Uh, after combat, if you won the combat, you may place Dr. Malcolm and Dr. Sattler in any space, so you can move them around. And, but generally, those are going to heal you up from being on the board, hurt characters from being on or next to them, or do a big swing from them being out. And then after healing, or after uh, attacking for a lot, they come off the board, you sort of need to build them back up. The one thing this, this deck is designed to do, and sort of indirectly designed to do, is move a lot. You're going to be maneuvering and moving a lot. And by the way, you don't have to just maneuver to put these out. If anything says, after combat, you may move one space. If you move, then you get one. So you're going to be repopulating these, ideally quickly, and then drawing the cards that are going to give you what you need to get. So there you go. That's how the game works. That's how the two sides operate. Let's go ahead and go back up top. All right, so that is Dr. Sadler versus T-Rex. Right off the bat, I want to say, 
Uh, and this is gonna sound more negative than I mean it to, I think, but I want to say that this is my least favorite set of all the sets they've come out with. Except maybe Buffy the Vampire Slayer, because I just don't know anything about that, those characters. Though that set was well done, and the characters were very distinct and interesting, came with four in one box, so there is that. In this one, they've split the t the, the Jurassic Park stuff into two sets. But again, I think most people who are interested in this are going to be getting the other one, or, you know, or have it already, anyway. Um, so the reason for that, well, there's a few things, but let's, let's get there when we get there. Let's start from the top with the theme and the setting. It's, it's very cool. It's very well done. Of course, it helps if you are a fan of Jurassic Park, but I can't imagine somebody being uh, drawn to this or sort of picking it up off a shelf and going, ooh, if they are not fans of Jurassic Park. So that's, that's a given. But what comes in here is uh, is very neat. It's uh, cool characters from the movie, characters you'll recognize. The T-Rex, of course, like I said, kind of a showstopper piece. Um, so yeah, cool theme. The aesthetics, still wonderful artwork in this game. Um, the gorgeous minis, very well done cards. This game has always excelled on, in all its iterations at looking good, at being clean. Uh, at just having a great look on the table. This one is no exception. The board that is included is not very exciting. Uh, it's, it's another board. It needs to come with a board in case this is the only thing you, you own. But, um, yeah, I thought the board that came in the one with the Raptors in the other set, the Velociraptor set, I thought that board was more interesting. It felt a little more distinct. This one's fine. Um, still, the whole thing looks very good. The replay value. I think it's okay, and the reason I'm saying that is because I think this is not a particularly good standalone set. If you are someone who is buying a bunch of unmatched sets anyway, this is a little less uh, problematic, because having the T-Rex is going to feel interesting. And, and you'll have tons of fun taking all sorts of characters up against the T-Rex, okay? Uh, but having just this set... The fight is um, not quite on rails, but it's a little more... There, there's sort of a more specific cadence to the way these the, the, this fight out of this box is going to feel than a lot of other sets out there. So I think this is a better set, and the replayability uh, is, is helped by you being someone who has a bunch of these. Uh, at the very least, both of the Jurassic Park ones, okay? The game arc. Well... I keep talking about the T-Rex because the T-Rex has 20-some life, right? 27 or whatever it is. It dictates what happens in this game to a great degree. It's a, it's a very different piece. It's a very different fighter in this game. And the game arc is going to feel that because in this game, you either play the long game, you stick it and run, or you use a ranged fighter, which the other people in this game, by the way, in this box are not. Um, you either do that and play the long game, or you die to the T-Rex. You will not take it down from its 27 life down to zero before you die, unless you are A, healing a lot, or B, running away and just playing the long game. You go toe-to-toe -to -toe with this thing, you die. Is that cool? Is that thematic? Yes. It also informs how the game goes, though. And that hurts the variability from one session to the next session to the next one, right? So the game arc is a little prescribed, let's call it. The ease of play in the game, I think it's pretty good. Uh, the T-Rex has a whole page right up in the rule book here that you need to make sure you read. You need to make sure you read the write-up for Dr. Sadler in the book and her main card and her aid card. There's the two cards there so that you understand when these uh, leaf tokens should be going out, these uh, insight tokens. Uh, otherwise, if you're only reading her main card, it says when one character or the other moves, that could leave some, some wiggle room for the language there. So just make sure you're reading both. It should be, I'm pretty sure it should be when either one moves, they can both get one. Uh, when any time they move, they can take one. So they go out fairly quickly, if you're doing it correctly. So, yeah, but the ease of play in this game has always been pretty easy. You know, yes, you need to adapt to the T-Rex, and that is sort of the harder one of the two to play, I would say. 
though it's not particularly challenging to remember to draw your card. You have to make sure you're on top of that. But uh, yeah, this system is so smooth. They've put out so many sets. From the very first one, they were very clean and well put together sets. So the uh, the ease and the, 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 the usability here really shouldn't be a problem. And then lastly, Tactics Lux Strategy. Already mentioned it. The long game. Gotta play the long game. Gotta stick and move. Have to try different things. Ranged characters are going to benefit from not having to be next to the T-Rex. The T-Rex might occupy a bunch of different zones. So you're likely able to attack it, you know. Um, but taking a melee fighter who plays for the short game up against the T-Rex is going to be a very uh, difficult fight, let's call it, okay? So, yeah, it's... it's um, it's an interesting box. Almost feels like it includes includes a boss battle in a way. It can be done. I don't want to make it sound like it is uh, not possible. I've played uh, quite a few times. The T Rex lost once. Um, I had the other character in the box here down to one health. I was playing the T Rex, and it was uh, our best player in the office by far. So, who was able to beat the the T Rex? So it is a tricky fight. It is a very difficult fight. Um, having said all of that, I don't dislike this game. They've yet to come up with a set that I out and out dislike. I think this is very cool. This is uh, almost a bit of a gimmicky set. It is. It serves its theme very well. I think if you're going to get one set, you're going to get both, and that's going to give you some fun matchups. Uh, the other character... I don't want to shortchange Dr. Sattler's deck. They have those those tokens that go out that can be used for healing, that can be used for a big swing. That's fun. It's a fun set, too. Much more in line with previous things. It's just, I can't imagine a lot of people picking this up or, or talking about it and, and ignoring the T-Rex. The T-Rex is the, the big thing in this box here. So there you go. Um, would I recommend this set? Yeah, if you're a completionist in the game, yes. Get it? You're going to have a lot of fun having this very outside-of-the-box character to go up against all sorts of things you can come up with. If you're just buying the Jurassic Park stuff, yes, but I would get both, okay? You're going to want that variability. If you're only thinking about getting this one, I don't know. Um... I I feel like this matchup is not as interesting out of the box as it could have been, okay? So there you go. Like I said, I really like Unmatched. I've rated them everything from 10 out of 10 for some of the sets. I think are fantastic down to 8 out of 10. In fact, I went back and looked at what I rated the other one with the, with the Velociraptors. I rated that a 9 out of 10. This one from me gets a 7 out of 10. That's still a seal of approval. I still think there's a lot of fun in this box. It just happens to also be my least favorite set, or one of my least favorites, from the line. Um, this guy is a problematic little guy. He is cool, very interesting, really dictates how the game works. And that's, that's, uh, I like the flexibility more than that. So there you go, 7 out of 10 from me, that is Dr. Sadler versus T-Rex for Unmatched Jurassic Park. My name is Z Garcia, thank you very much, I'll see you on the next one.